What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and this is another episode of Inside the Network where we share exclusive content from inside of brandmannetwork.com. Now, this is another snippet from an interview that I did with George Goodwich, founder of playlistpush.com, and this is where he talks about how they approach quality control. I think this snippet is useful not only for artists, but just for businesses in general. So I really wanted to share it because I have some other things to talk about. So let's hop into it. Just from your experience, how do you guys even, how do you qualify playlists for their their quality? You know mm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. So what we do is like when a curator signs up to play this push, they're on like a week trial period. So mm -hmm. we make sure they're listening to songs. Uh, we can see if they're copying and pasting reviews. And then the most important thing for us is we can actually measure their playlist and see how many monthly listeners it has. If it only if it has like less than 1% listener to follower ratio, we'll remove them from the platform. So, I mean, we've had playlisters that have, you know, over 100,000 followers and we've kicked them out because you get on that playlist and then you get, you know, 10, 20 new listeners from it. You're going to be pissed, right? It's like going back to managing expectations. So that makes sense. Yeah. That's like, I think that's been our biggest thing is managing the network making sure we only have people in there that want to actually like help indie artists and aren't just seeing it as like, Oh wow, I can make money from this website and really vetting those people out before they even start getting paid to review songs. Mm. So yeah, that's interesting Go going back to that managing expectations part. So what is the hardest part about that process? Do you guys have it down to a system where it's just easy to, to vet out those people or is it still a little difficult at times? Yeah, no, I mean, everything's systematized. Um, we actually added something new so that if you change the name of your playlist to something completely different, um, then we actually automatically remove it until someone physically, until one, one of us logs in and checks it. Mm -hmm. And if it's like top hits 2019 to top hits 2020, like, okay, cool, we can keep that person in. But if they're just trying to create the name of like new albums, like a, a mm -hmm. new rap album comes out and like every right. week changing the name, that's not really helping us out, right? Like, yeah, those playlists are cool because it's gonna get you a few streams right out of the gate, but it's really tough to actually maintain that audience. So it doesn't make sense for us to have those playlists in the network. So yeah, I mean, pretty much everything is automated end to end um, for curators. And it's, it's tough for us because people are like pissed, you know, they're like, hey, I signed up and you deleted my account. It's like, yeah, dude, you signed up, we scanned your playlist, it sucks, you were automatically removed. So, you know, they're always like getting on the chat and want to know because they don't know what we're doing on our end, right? We're just saying right. like, hey, your playlist isn't that good and you can't sign up, so sorry. Um, but I mean, it's it's nice that we have that because if we didn't, it would, it would be a shit show. It would be extremely hard to figure out who we can work with and who we can't. Gotcha. Okay. So what are, obviously, okay, you have these, things like the whole murky business article and I mean, so many people who speak negatively on playlists in general, mm -hmm. how has there been difficult times, right? As play, as a company or like where your playlisters might fall off in quality or, or do you guys ever have trouble trying to give um, certain results or how do, yeah, how does that work? Or did you, I, I guess the best way to say it in your own language, did you guys ever have trouble where expectations were mismanaged? Yeah, for sure. I think the, we had, we just, we've had a few rough patches where, you know, someone would use playlist push and then they would like blog about it. Right. Mm -hmm. And what, what happens is like people will see like, Oh, playlist push review and click on it and read it. But like, I swear at least 90% of those people don't listen to the actual record we promoted right? It's not linked in there. It's just saying like, Hey, I didn't get on that many playlists. And this is what happened. It's like, dude, go listen to the song and then <laughs> we can chat about it. Right. Yeah. So that's been tough because, um, we do run a lot of campaigns sometimes and it's tough to like keep track of like every single thing and, and who's coming to the website and who's saying what. So 
you know, and it goes both ways. Like if someone has an amazing experience and each song that goes out does well, they're not going to like write about it. Right. And say, Oh wow, these guys are amazing. They're just going to keep using it. Be like, all right, this is dope. I'm not telling anyone about this. Yeah. So that's kind of, that's been the tough part. And I think, you know, we're working on building that out and starting to tell those stories of some of the artists we work with, if they let us. And that's kind of like where we're going now, but, I never want it to get to a point where like, oh yeah, we have all these case studies and look how great these artists did because really, man, it's based on the music. Like the people that get results and do well, they have good music, they get it, like they're in it for the long run. Um, yeah. And you know, there's other people that, you know, they're in it to promote whatever, you know, courses they're selling and they see an SEO land grab and, you know, they can write about our company and know that it's going to pop up. So that's that's been super tough but also i think that sometimes it's been good because i feel like that's weeded out a lot of junk or people that don't 100 percent believe in what they're doing mm. um from not using the site so it's actually kind of like a blessing and a curse right i i don't Got want you. i don't want there to be all it's really weird if you only see amazing things about playlist push right it's like we're music promotion like do we hit everything out of the park no but what happens is we try to take care of the people that don't have good, that, you know, might not have a good campaign or only get added to a few playlists. Like we have systems in place to communicate with those people and help them out. Mm, interesting. All right. So if you want to check out the full interview, you can actually check it out at the link in the description below. Typically, these types of interviews are actually inside of brandmannetwork.com exclusively. But since this is something attached to artist services specifically that you might decide you want to use or not, I want to make sure that you have as full perspective as possible and be able to judge for yourself whether you want to try playlist push. So I think it's helpful to see where George has gone, his background, and even other more expanded thoughts on how they approach the company. So you can decide for yourself whether that's something you think is useful or not. However, one thing that I do, well actually a couple things that I do want to talk about from this particular interview is the way you judge and pay attention to feedback because he noticed something that I've seen so many times before and of course it's not just a music thing but when it comes to artists especially sometimes a lot of times you know the disgruntled people are the people who are more likely to leave feedback right and if the service is actually quality if the service is actually quality in music most of the disgruntled people are likely the people to be people who don't have quality music or need to do some work on their music that's an issue and i think artists should make sure when they're looking at feedback in terms of these services especially if it's negative right well positive and negative but especially the negative right you need to make sure you listen to the artist's music first go check it out so you can see who you're talking about because if you say oh man i use this service and i didn't really get any listens or you know, once they stopped using me, just it didn't seem like anybody stayed with me. Well, if you go to listen to their music and you're like, yo, I don't like this at all, then maybe you can consider the fact that fans probably thought the same thing. Potential fans probably thought the same thing. So just be sure that you understand the quality of the feedback, not just the words that get said, right? But the, the, the type of person in the user profile saying that. And of course, on the other end, you know, just be aware of a lot of fake positive feedback as well. But that's more the company doing wrong, more likely than just the individual person. That's a whole nother problem. Now, the last thing I want to talk about from this particular snippet is just the idea again of the quality control, the intent and thoughtfulness that they put into systems to make their life easier. It makes the artist's life easier. What makes their life easier is to be able to serve the customer and have less issues with the customer and all of those things that they went through and things that they've talked about that will create less problems and not, not having to deal with those things again and again and again, right? Those are the types of thoughts and the way you should approach, right? Your same systems that you're building. You guys know I'm huge on build, building systems if you've watched this enough because getting fans, right, or getting awareness is easy. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it's easy in comparison to getting awareness and keeping awareness, building a sustainable fan base, right? There's a lot of people who pop and they're gone tomorrow because they don't have something to capture the people. They don't have something to capture the money that comes in once that awareness gets created, right? Even for a small example, 
one thing that an artist Trey Little on his TikTok campaigns he said he he did right when he went viral he made sure that he went live at those moments to have all these new people come in to because now they're going to be able to interact with his live because it's one thing to do it when you have your regular fan base but you have more people coming in right now my system is to go live as soon as i have as many of these people come in as possible whenever i have a video that's popping off and goes viral because that's going to allow me to connect in a different way with them on a different level and frankly it actually converts into money when we're talking about tiktok and tiktok lives but that's a whole nother conversation you guys could check out that particular interview on tiktok in the description below i'll probably have that out by the time of this video so yeah it'll be in the description below as well and as always this video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com we help artists develop their brand and build marketing infrastructure so they can grow their fan base if you like this video go ahead hit the like button if you like it you might as well share it. and if you're not subscribed you know what to do hit that subscribe button